Welcome to our new Rebecca Tree Gaming and Esports Hot Topic. Hot Toys, the spiciest meat. Let's run it down for the noobs. We're going to present all the goodies we've gathered, which we will discuss and most likely argue. But luckily for all of us, there's a mute button here that we could use only once to shut the other up, shut Marissa. Yeah, well, let's be honest, we <laughs> haven't used the mute button in a minute, so maybe we might catfight today. I don't know, who knows? We like it when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting truth, so let's get to it, shall we? Mm -hmm. We're gonna kick off our first story, because that takes a look at the relationship between streaming and talent management. Cloaksy announced this week that he is yeah. signing with Loaded Management Firm, a talent management firm for content creators and gaming influencers. Ninja and Shroud are already signed to the agency, which oversees brand deals, merchandise, opportunities, personal appearances, and more. Over the past couple of years, more streamers have joined firms like this in order to capitalize on their growing brands. Camille, is joining a management firm like this uh, really a necessity for these influencers? Because really, they've already got it made in the shade. These people are coming after them. And someone like Ninja, who had his wife yeah. managing him, was kind of taking care of that for a while, too. Well, I think it's like if you have family members taking care of like your stuff, yeah. uh, it's good to unload that on someone else because it's just good for your family relations. Yeah, sure. But um, someone who has 1.5 followers, which I think uh, that's what Cloaksy has. Million? Um, yeah, million, 105. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 105 million uh, followers. Mm -hmm. I think for him, it makes sense because that's a, a lot to yeah. deal with. So yeah. from a perspective of gaining opportunities, probably not so much because he's probably getting those opportunities to him. It's more yeah. from a management standpoint in terms of organizing his stuff together and not yeah. having to deal with that himself. Right, of course. Also, when it's not connected to you or your family, you're able to negotiate a higher rate or have yes. someone do the dirty work for you. Uh, we're seeing this now with Mitch Marner and the Leafs, okay? <laughs> His agent's really asking for a lot. And none of the blame can go on Mitch Marner because, well, it can go to the management or maybe his dad. you got to pass the buck, right? But yeah. uh, with this, true, you can pass the buck. But also with a management firm, it allows for other opportunities because they might That's get true. something in for another influencer, but now maybe they make a deal where, well, we have this other influencer mm -hmm. we work with too, which is exactly what happened with Apex Legends. Apex Legends took off because of the deals they made with this yes. firm, with these influencers, to actually put this in place, and then all of a sudden, boom, blows up. Nothing like that has ever happened before. I think we're going to see more of these management firms tops up, top, or come in because we've got more of these influencers popping up, right, yeah. that need management. Well, and the thing is, too, it's like you're talking about the deals, but yeah. a lot of companies as well would prefer to deal with a management firm because they have prior relationships with their book of products, right? Yeah, maybe. So it makes sense. Um, for someone like Ninja, who has like a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Fortnite, maybe not so much, um, mm. but he did sign on eventually, right? Yeah. But like in terms of the opportunities there, I think a uh, management for firm is usually the it best depends. choice. It depends. Just read your contracts, people. Yeah. Read <laughs> that your is, contracts, That's people. a lesson that we've seen over and over again, so we <laughs> should learn it. All right. When it comes to stats in esports, you've got plenty. Kills, deaths, assists, creep score, the list goes on. But the Overwatch League is introducing a new stat to sum up a player's effectiveness. Called the Player Impact Rating, or PIR, the stat aims to showcase how important a player is in team fights, regardless of the role. In a sense, it's like war in baseball, meant to capture how effective a player is since specific stats don't paint a full picture. Mm. Marissa, does esports e have a problem that could be solved using advanced stats found in other sports? Um, is PIR a good thing or? I don't, I don't think that it had a problem not catching stats, but I think it's great that we are monitoring this now because, mm -hmm. again, this is important for betting purposes, right? Yeah. This is important also for other players to compare themselves to other players. It also will come in handy when it comes to um, any kind of money that's yeah. being given to these players as well, any salaries that might be doled out. <laughs> you want to make sure that the player you're giving the most money to is the best player on that list. So I do like seeing these stats. It's really important for us as viewers us as betters if we were into that sort of thing. And just for the scene overall, we need this because we need more of these things to attach ourselves to sports the mainstream can someday understand. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned betting because remember, it was the Overwatch League that's coming up with that app mm. that you could actually predict who's going to win place and then, bets. yeah, the, fan, the place your bets mm -hmm. app. And the thing is, now with this stat, they didn't go into detail on what this app will have. Mm. So I'm wondering if it will have player stats 
on it now. Yeah, yeah, and like then, so now people are definitely going to be betting behind closed doors real money. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Yeah, well, the thing is, like with baseball, especially because we use the baseball reference here, there's so many people that are still into baseball, but the average age of viewers watching baseball is actually mm -hmm. in, their, in the 50s because yeah. a lot of older people really enjoy it. But you see people sitting in the stands, taking down notes, marking down every inning. It's really important to keep stats, right? That's, yeah. what, is, that's what makes baseball so brilliant, right? So if we can attach stats now to something like Overwatch League, it might make it more interesting for people that don't really know what the F is going on when they're watching. Because let's face it, if you've never played o Overwatch before, you don't know what the heck is going on. You see it on your TV, it's just madness. Or on the flip side, it could confuse things even more for people and make nah. it less attractive to watch. Like, I, uh, stats, yeah, that's fun and all, but it's quite boring for a game like Overwatch. No, that's not true. I don't like what Overwatch, mean? It makes it, it makes it more exciting. <laughs> All right, Camille, that's enough for you. We recently caught up with Brittany Williams from Intel to talk about a new way to combat toxicity on stream. Intel actually recently partnered with a company called Spirit AI to um, use machine learning and artificial intelligence to actually reduce toxicity on text and voice chat channels. And it's a moderation tool, really. It's the way of using AI and using machine learning to help predict these toxic behaviors and then having a human element come in and make the final decision on whether this is toxic enough to actually remove someone from the channel. And it's a way of really leveling the playing field and having more people feel comfortable on these channels. Uh, okay, so that was at IEM Chicago, but Camille, how can, how effective do you think this AI and machine learning can actually be when it comes to combating online toxicity? Is that possible? Well, the thing is, it's a really cool idea, like on paper, it looks like it will work really well. Oh, yeah, anytime anybody yeah. mentions machine learning, I'm like, <laughs> oh, for sure, it's that's going to be work. good. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be good. But the thing is, there's a few issues. It takes time for AI to adapt mm. to the conversations that are happening, sure. happening and understanding what is toxic. And people People always find a way around it. Mm. So will this be effective in the end that you're going to see a return where it's beneficial for streamers, for example, to mm. use this? I don't know if we're going to get there. Yeah, it's interesting because obviously with anything, there are certain words that become popular for a minute. Mm. Are people using like the Pepe meme or Pepe yeah. hands? Like those things become toxic for a little while, but then they kind of fall off, right? There's always ebbs and flows to even toxicity, <laughs> not just life. So it'd be interesting to see how this can actually be implemented and, and if there will be, you know, long-term effects from yeah. it. Because no matter what on the internet, trolls will always find a way. They always, they find, a always find a way. And it's like these Twitch bans that have been happening, right? Like. Yeah. So so Twitch bans people, and this whole idea of it being reviewed by an actual person, mm. you have that at Twitch where some of these channels that are being banned are being reviewed by an actual person, and they're making the wrong decision anyway. So really, is this solving right. anything? No. Right, I know. Tyler's like, maybe it'll become a challenge where you can outsmart the machine. <laughs> That was that comment you know that's already going to be out there for all those trolls. They're going to be like, oh, how can I outsmart no, this really? AI? And maybe that's going to actually make them more in chat to be more toxic? Well, yeah, for sure. There'll be Discord channels. There'll be Reddit threads. There will be a way. They will find a way to just completely dismantle whoever it is <laughs> they want to dismantle. That's the problem. But I do like that there's something being put into place. Yes. Somebody's taking their time and energy and devoting it to combating toxicity because we need more of this, especially for esports. My God, is it ever rampant? Uh, I I'm just so tired of hearing even just the racist banter that happens when you jump into a pub. Like, it's, yeah. it's not okay. It's not uh, okay. I need to stop. Yeah, it's not okay. And you know what? People, just get behind it and stand up for people. Just be nice. And then you don't have to just have be these kind. AIs being the moderator for toxicity. Okay, for our last story, Nintendo has long banned online Mario Maker 2 levels for using glitches, inappropriate content, and other mysterious reasons. But it appears that Nintendo is also banning offline levels for the same reasons as several players who have abused a glitch to create levels have been discovered. Again, these are not uploaded to online servers, meaning that they only exist on the specific console they were created on. What? Marissa, is Nintendo just trying to control too much now? <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> there was a lot going on there. Yeah. Um, so pretty much with the this glitch that they're finding, it, it's uh, one of the main problems. It's a black hole glitch, and it could allow you to spawn infinite numbers of items. Okay. Um, and this is usually available offline, but okay. Nintendo is now just taking those levels away and saying, no, you can't use it because there's a glitch in the game. You can't even use the offline. Didn't like this levels. just happen? This just happened with Ubisoft. Yeah. Like just recently, <laughs> there was a glitch that played.
players were using to their advantage, but a glitch that they had made a mistake of, and it was already in game. Yeah. And then they took it away from them. But do and you even think... though they were using it to their like, just can we have some fun? <laughs> can we have any fun at all? Like, if people can know how to abuse glitches, they should be allowed to abuse. Get Tyler, shut up. He's in my room, like, no. No fun for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, <right. laughs> well, I understand. You know, Nintendo tries to really control their messages, and they have uh, a lot of gamers of all ages playing. So I guess I could understand why they don't want it online. But it just, I just don't get Nintendo's logic for not having it on just one console, no. just one. Uh, I just feel and like I just feel like creators and people that know how to do this because there's just there's a barrier of entry here, right? Yeah. So uh, for those people that are able to do it and able to implement this and able to use this to their own benefit, they should be able to do so because they're smart enough to figure it out. Yeah. As long as they're not using it for evil, and as long as they're not using it to I don't know put any explicit content out there, put any you know penises or whatever it is that Nintendo's trying to protect the that player Nintendo from. That Nintendo also puts in their games. Right, but like accidentally. Accidentally, yeah. um, kind of like Disney accidentally puts things in their movies as well. <laughs> I know what you're doing, you pervert. I totally get it. But I just feel like if people are able to utilize or abuse this yeah. glitch, then they should be able to do so. I I don't like a creative a creative game like this yeah. being given to creators and then being taken back in a way that's like, okay, well you can't be that creative with it. We well, made a mistake, so you can't be that creative. Especially pulling down the level. Like, why don't you just patch your game and make it good? Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's time to check in with streamers in Clip It. We love how crazy the Su Such Dragon can be on his stream. I think his name is Such Dragon. Yeah, can be okay. on stream. But this time it looks like he may have a bug in his system. Mm -mm. Look at the yes, the cables look like ROM. Oh crap, how does that happen? Okay. Alright, is that something we need to fix? Is that something? Oh, okay, obviously it is. <laughs> I guess it's something we need to fix. Okay, okay, we'll fix that. Okay. Excuse me. Oh god. Um, one second, please. Excuse me. Thank you. It's almost done. Everything. Everything's almost fixed. <laughs> Jojo. I must have did something. <laughs> okay. Amazing. Yo, when we're trying okay. to be creative and yeah. like streamers trying to be creative and make really cool transitions, yeah. and it all goes wrong. Yeah, I that know. It sucks. Yeah, but it's so entertaining that it actually works, right? Like the whole idea and the whole your your goal really while you're streaming live is to be clipped because something funny happened that that's you didn't true, plan. That's true. So listen, it got clipped and now we're using it on the show and it's, it's entertaining to us. So we're happy for the glitch. Yeah, and also using JoJo Bizarre's adventure theme. Like, come on. Okay. I see like, Sushi Dragon. Are you serious? I love that. Are you that's weeb? my favorite part. I can hear that weeb on or not. I can hear okay. that on loop over. All right. <laughs> we're always hearing about dad reflexes, Tyler. But in our next clip, Mrs. Ruby shows off some mom reflexes. To make something, and the only time adults are allowed on camera is for anything that could hurt them. Oh. All right. Let us not die. Merritt kicked over his stool and as he was trying to jump off, and then I grabbed him like a ninja. <laughs> yes, um, moms and dads, honestly, the superheroes of the world, saving kids from doing stupid things every single day. <laughs> you know what? I love that, though, because, yes, dad saves always are out there on the internet, but I yeah. feel like moms have a lot of saves, but they go underrated because they're doing them just so often. Oh, my gosh, I know. Moms are often, like, the unsung heroes mm -hmm. of life, really. We don't celebrate them enough. We have Mother's Day, but, like, is that enough? No. no you, listen, if you are connected to your mom in some way, you should definitely reach out and tell her that you love her today. Yeah, also... Can you reach out? Send her a text if yeah. she uses, you know, smart If she's on the internet. If, she's, if she knows how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Also, like, Ruby, she was getting choked out by her son. I know. And still saved him like a but ninja. He's so cute. I would have been I like, need, that's it. I need to tune into that stream actually more because it seems like it's, uh, it's a good time. All right, it's truly the best time of day when we troll the Twitterverse to bring you all the things that pros bless us with in their timeline. Paladin Amber brings me joy because she tells the dum-dums out there where they need to go in a very digestible way. She says, PSA for all my whiny babies out there who are sick of seeing my tweets. Listen, y'all ever had the Twitter tour? If not, allow me to introduce you to the mute feature. Y'all can and should be using technology appropriately. If not, yeet your phone away because the vids just keep coming. Ugh. 
I stand for this queen so hard. Yeah, I love really how just in the past, uh, I would even say month, she's ramped up her quality of production, yeah. number one. She's ramped up the way she's completely destroying trolls online. I love it because the more attention you get, unfortunately, the more trolls you're going to get as well. And she's handling, and she's handling them it really well. so yeah. perfectly. Uh, I just, that's exactly how it should be. They need to be told where to go. <laughs> Little whiny baby, seriously, there is a mute function. You can figure it out. Quit being friggin' dumb dumbs. Okay, thanks. Well, there are, I, there's also a lot of old creepy men out there that probably just don't know how to use their Twitter, so they don't even know where the no, mute no, function no, is. So let's build a diagram. No, so like what no. to do? Diagram. Let's do it. it, it there's it's old, young. <laughs> it's all kinds of people just thinking that they're hilarious, sending her DMs or whatever it is, telling her that they're sick of seeing her videos. Like mm, it's too bad because she's then gonna don't keep watch, posting them. Don't watch. Don't watch. Read her. All right. Trigger warning on this next one from Courage. The first Transformer movie with what? With Shia LaBeouf is better than all the Star Wars movies. I only tweet facts. What? Courage. Are you crazy? I have a problem with this. You can't put Shia LaBeouf in like a better space. Oh my God, I can't even, than Star Wars, are you? Oh my gosh, and you're talking about the original? A New Hope? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna meet her because like Camila come totally, she she read about the trigger warning. She, she warned the tr about the trigger warning and then didn't actually <laughs> follow suit. He's just triggering you, you totally fell for it. Oh my God, Camille, honestly. Okay, listen, <laughs> we will move on. Some people will do anything to be on top. This is Fudo, he focuses on an Evo win. And what we need to talk about here is yes, focusing on the win, and I hope that works for him. I really do yeah. because that oh, water looks meditating. Sorry, really I cold. I was still muted, but I'm not. No, you're not. The water <laughs> looks really cold. So you know what that means, fellas? Shrinkage. <laughs> You what? know what that means. Am well, I wrong? Thing is, Tell I, me I'm wrong. I love his getup because it's very uh, loose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I feel like if it, the water, <laughs> the water was warmer, a lot of no. that would be happening. Um, but you're reminding me, it is cold. Yeah, no. So I'm, I'm, it's, it's very close to his body. For sure. I just hope <laughs> that works for him. Honestly, I do. I love that. It was a nice visual. Yeah. You gotta okay. be one with nature and let your ones be one with nature. All right. <laughs> Wait, let's move on because it's time to get some crowd control. This is where we showcase some of the great or simply dank things the community has been making. Our first post is from the imager user, I'm Freeway. He shows us that Pokemon can be very protective. <laughs> She's taking move along. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love the- They're uh, cute. They are cute. I love the interspecies Pokemon relationship that's going on, the Lapras and whatever else that Pokemon is. I don't know what Yeah. Um, <laughs> yo, people have been crushing Pokemon Go lately, like more than before. It's having a resurgence. So many people out there on the streets just absolutely crushing, getting their Ks in, have getting you their been movement. Going back? No, I haven't gotten it back because, as we all know, I broke my elbow playing Pokemon Go. It's a traumatic experience to go back yeah. and open up uh, the game. Because I'm really dumb and I was playing it while riding my bike. You shouldn't be Don't playing it while operating no. a moving vehicle. Okay, that's rule <laughs> number one. Uh, but I was wearing a helmet, so luckily... But that's the thing. Like, people... People died. Yeah. Like I walked off a cliff. You can die playing Pokemon Go because you're not paying attention because you're just focused so much on your tablet or your phone yes. that you can't get it together. Like, yo, you, no, it's dangerous. Be careful out there, people. You can die, but if my last thing I'm looking at is that cute little couple, I'm okay with it. Don't lie. <laughs> All right. Next up is a post from artist Mart Verkus, who made a comic strip breaking down different games' weapons mechanics. Here are a couple of my favorites. Call of Duty, you have a weapon and a headset because words hurt more than bullets. And Borderlands, you have a weapon, you hoard weapons until you find a similar but slightly better weapon. Yeah. <laughs> that is so true. That last one is really true. That is like all of my Borderlands playtime. I love it if this is like an artist rendition, but I swear to God, like I, I probably could have made that comic. Marissa. No, seriously, like I, don't you remember making comics in school? <laughs> like that's what it looks like, I, that I made it in elementary school. <laughs> I like 
the vibe. I like the vibe. Like, like that's cool. calling the artist out. Oh yo, my gosh. Yo, yo, I made, I should share one of the comics I made. They're, Can you? They're really funny to look back on. Yeah, I wrote a, I, Can you I did a little storyboard in? about a shift. You know what, I'm not gonna no, talk no, about you. it. Because it is super embarrassing. Okay, uh, never mind, I'm sorry I brought it up. Listen, let's keep <laughs> spitting hard. Truth or last post from Reddit user, Raziel the Vampire. Okay, that's how you remember a game. That's how it really is. <laughs> Oh, it's so true. <laughs> we keep our memory, right? Like even just looking back on like Mario 64, yeah. in my mind, that was, those were the best graphics and that was the best time, it was the best video game I've ever seen. Like that was yeah. my childhood, that was it. right? Yeah. Yes, but how it really looks like, well, you go back to it now, it's pretty polygony. Does that change your impression of the game? Like, if you were ghost, I know you've been spitting like, oh, you're all about Mario Sunshine and glorifying yes. it. Did you yeah. go back and play it and see the graphics? Yes. Does it hold up? You know why? Because Mario Sunshine is one of those games that's amazing to watch in a speed run. Oh, okay. It's so much fun to watch. So, yes, I have looked back and watched it. I still think that, like, in my mind's eye, yes, it's still wonderful, it's still beautiful, and I still think it's the best Mario game ever made. Come at me, bro. It's too late to mute me. That's it for me to remember. You can always hit us up on socials at Squad State. Just to say hi or send us some stuff to react to. We'll see you next time.